Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we're going to be checking out the Spanish unique unit, the Conquistador, and why it's so good. They have a reputation as an amazing Castle Age unique unit, and still quite good in Imperial. So I wanted to look into them, focusing on the reasons why that's the case. If you've used Conquistadors quite a bit, I expect this will reinforce things you've already discovered. But if you don't use them or haven't had success with them in the past, hopefully this gives you a better idea of when they shine. First though, we should address what exactly the Conquistador is. You could consider it a type of cavalry archer, and in terms of bonus damage, that's basically how the game sees them. But it's more than that, and they're particularly unique as the only mounted gunpowder unit, at least until the Bombard Elephant is inevitably introduced. Given Castle Age is when the Conquistador is primarily talked about, naturally most of our comparison is going to happen there. To start, here I have an assortment of units that you might say are comparable, by either being a Cavalry Archer variant or a Gunpowder unit, in the case of the Janissary. Comparing the cost of these units, Conquistadors are the most gold intensive, which is fair enough as gold was sort of the Conquistadors whole deal. Notice they're more expensive than a typical Cavalry Archer, though the cost is actually most reminiscent of the Janissary, given other Cavalry Archer variants cost wood instead of food. If we switch to looking at their HP, notice they're right in line with the others, though of course you can improve this with Bloodlines, bringing them up to a respectable 75 HP in Castle Age. Now from HP alone, you might think they don't look very tanky, but that's deceiving, as if we look at their armor, they have two of each type, which is the most out of this group. To me, this is the first big distinction, in that Conquistadors are a tankier version of the Cavalry Archer, taking at least one or two extra hits from many units. That extra armor does seem to weigh them down though, and while they're mounted and faster than infantry, they're significantly slower than light cavalry, camels, cavalry archers, and even knights. On the other hand, their training time is pretty standard for a castle unit at 24 seconds, so nothing too exciting is happening there. In terms of upgrades, they're affected by bloodlines, husbandry, and archer armor, though they're not helped out by blacksmith attack upgrades, and even chemistry doesn't increase their attack. One important point here though is Spanish don't pay the gold cost of blacksmith upgrades and you also need considerably fewer upgrades than other cavalry archer variants, as they're unaffected by the archer attack upgrades, thumb ring, ballistics, and Parthian tactics. Of course you need castles to make them which are more expensive than archery ranges, but there's a huge savings in upgrade costs that shouldn't be dismissed. The big elephant in the room though is their attack, which in my opinion is what makes them so good. First, in terms of range, they end up being the same as other cavalry archers, though again they don't need fletching and bodkin arrow to reach this point, saving you some resources. Notice instead the Janissary has 8 range, which is a bit of an outlier here, outranging mangonels and town centers. Switching now to their damage output though, this is where the Conquistador stands out as a gunpowder unit. They have 16 attack, compared to 8 or 9 for other cavalry archers after bodkin arrow, though as gunpowder units they also have a relatively slow reload time. We can account for that by looking at their damage per minute, which combines their attack and fire rate to give a sense of how much they're actually dishing out over time. The big thing to notice here is by inspection, all of them seem to max out somewhere around 300 damage per minute, either a little above or below, but the differences are relatively small to the eye. Of course, this is probably underselling the Conquistador, as it's assuming your opponent doesn't have pierce armor, and that's not a trivial thing to overlook. To give an example, here we have a unit that deals a weak 3 damage attack every second, and another unit that deals a massive 30 damage attack every 10 seconds. In this case, both have a damage output of 30 every 10 seconds, and if your opponent has no armor, then they look the same. Now though, let's give the target unit 2 pierce armor. Now every 10 seconds, the weaker unit is dealing 10 damage, 1 per second, while the harder hitting one is dealing 28 damage, almost 3 times as much if we let this play out. Obviously, it's an exaggerated example, but I would contend that this is why the Conquistador is so strong. Jumping back to our damage per minute calculations, the Conquistador, I think it's fair to say, isn't really standing out here. But now let's pretend they're attacking something that has two pierce armor. Villagers have two, pikemen and crossbows with blacksmith upgrades have two, knights have two by default, etc. It's a very common thing to run into. Correcting for that armor, these are the new values, and now at point blank range, the Conquistador is the second heaviest hitter out of the group. You could even argue they're likely doing more damage than the Arambi, which tends to miss quite a bit even up close. Let's go further though, and say you're against something with 4 pierce armor, maybe an eagle warrior, a knight with armor upgrades, or an elite skirmisher. Now you have cavalry archer variants doing 133, 169, 177 damage per minute, and numbers like that. 
while the Conquistador is getting something similar at its maximum range, including misses, but up to 248 damage per minute when up close. That's about 50% more damage than those Cavalry Archer benchmarks, and in fact, it's now indisputably the heaviest hitter if used at point blank range. The takeaway is that the Conquistador isn't necessarily dishing out more damage when accuracy is factored in, but it is less impacted by enemy pierce armor, and the amount of advantage that gives can very quickly add up. In a moment, we'll see some real world examples of that, and it's a consistent theme that will come up over and over that the more pierce armor something has, the better the Conquistador is going to look relative to the others. A quick side note I want to make about their attack though, that seems fitting with this theme, is they do a guaranteed 4 damage to ramps in Castle Age, which increases to 6 with the Elite upgrade, as well as an extra plus 2 against buildings. On the flip side, in terms of bonus damage taken, Conquistadors are technically an Archer, Cavalry, Cavalry Archer, and Gunpowder unit. That means bonus damage from Skirmishers, Ghulams, Pikes, Camels, Condottieri, Camel Archers, Genoese Crossbows, Samurai, it's a pretty long list though bonus damage doesn't always tell the whole story, especially since the Conquistador can hit and run. So that's the unit at a glance, but now let's take a look at a few examples of how this all works in some different matchups. Here I'm primarily going to focus on how they compare to Cavalry Archers as a baseline and the Manga Dai as a fellow S tier Cavalry Archer unique unit. We'll start things off against Villagers. Here their higher attack means they only need 3 shots instead of 7 to take one out which is pretty significant as it means you only need a group of 3 or 4 Conquistadors to have an effective raiding force and take out villagers in a single volley. That's especially handy in early castle age when you haven't had time to build up decent numbers. Next against pikemen, something I haven't mentioned yet is they have the lowest frame delay out of the cavalry archer unique units in castle age, so they're pretty easy to micro despite a long reload time between shots. In fact, I wouldn't even say pikemen are a scary counter if you're paying attention, and even just a small group of conquistadors can pick them off one by one. Checking out how they do against eagle warriors, history tells us this should work out okay for the conquistador, and it is a good example of how they're less impacted by high pierce armor. With all castle age upgrades, eagles take just 5 shots instead of the 19 they take from other cavalry archers. Even with less than perfect accuracy and a slow attack rate, more often than not Conquistadors are easily the best out of this group. With that said, Eagles technically win with equal numbers in melee, but remember Conquistadors are doing much better than Cavalry Archers in a similar situation. Outnumbering 3-2 here, the Eagle Warriors attacking Conquistadors end with 40% of their HP left, compared to 80% and 71% against the other two. Of course the main thing here is Eagle Warriors have very high pierce armor, and in a similar way against Elite Skirmishers, they're the only unit here that beats them one on one, and in fact they beat them pretty handily while the other units lose outright. Remember the Elite Skirmisher has a lot of bonus damage against Cavalry Archers, and I wouldn't say this is a fight you want to take, as with equal resources, Skirms end with a little over half their HP left against Conquistadors, but it's much better than the over 80% HP left over against Cavalry Archers. Of course, in reality, if you're seeing a lot of skirmishers as Spanish, then it's pretty easy to add in a few mangonels or knights. Again, we see a similar sort of thing happen against knights as well, as remember knights have a reasonably good 2 base pierce armor that can be upgraded to 4 in castle age. In fact, once all upgrades have come in, conquistadors are actually doing 3 times the damage against knights as these other 2 units, and have their own extra armor as well, which lets them come reasonably close to trading 1 for 1. Even with equal resources up close in the way you probably wouldn't want to fight with Conquistadors, the Knights ended with only a third of their HP left, which isn't that decisive. Especially once you start to factor in hit and run, you could easily beat an equal number of Knights with Conquistadors, sometimes without even losing a single unit. Now Camels on the other hand are a bit scarier, as they of course have bonus damage on top of faster movement than Knights and especially faster than Conquistadors. They end with about half their HP left with equal resources, so up close they're a pretty good counter and this really isn't a fight you want to take. Again though, hit and run is still doable though, and if you're paying attention you can definitely engage with conquistadors and come out maybe battered but still victorious. Even crossbows aren't necessarily a great counter, as for example with equal resources 7 against 13, conquistadors in fact win this fight in isolation. This result surprised me a bit, though it doesn't necessarily tell the whole story, as crossbows have extra range and are easier to mass with multiple archery ranges than a castle unit would be. This test alone though shows why conquistadors are so strong in castle age. Knights and crossbows are probably the two most popular castle age units, and conquistadors are doing well against both, even with a numbers deficit. 
On the other hand, monks can give them some trouble. One on one, it's hard to say, as conquistadors are pretty inaccurate, so a small number of monks can be a deterrent and get some good value. They could at least be a part of a defense against conquistadors and also outrange them by three tiles. Another reasonable counter that you could consider would be mangonels. Conquistadors are relatively tanky and the high attack does help offset the mangonel's pierce armor, but the mangonel still deals a lot of damage to bunched up units and is a good tool to have in combination with something else. Altogether though, I hope from these tests it's pretty clear why the conquistador is so feared, as it's great at raiding and there aren't that many effective ways to deal with them. So far, we've only been looking at the castle age though, so now let's take a quick look at the power spike they gain in imperial age. Of course, the big one is their elite upgrade, which costs 1200 food and 600 gold, which is very similar to the Mangadai and elite Arambai. It gives your conquistadors 15 more HP, 2 more attack, a 5% bump to your accuracy, and a bit more bonus damage against rams and buildings. That upgrade isn't bad by any means, but you're still not quite getting the same power spike as other cavalry archer variations though, as they're unaffected by chemistry and bracer. On top of the other elite upgrades, that means their competition picks up an extra range, two attack, and at this point, probably ballistics and 100% accuracy. Well, there isn't that much that's new and affecting conquistadors. I think this is part of why they're not as legendary in Imperial Age, and it's actually a bit ironic that in the late game, your gunpowder unit starts to feel more and more out by conventional bow and arrow units. It's not that elite conquistadors are suddenly bad, they're just not as clearly dominant as they were in Castle Age against their direct competition. That'll do it for this one though, and hopefully it gives you a few new ideas and maybe a slightly different perspective on the strength of conquistadors. Huge thanks to Seb, Woodruff, John, Jockster, Kyle, Justin, James, Samantha, and everyone else on Patreon for their amazing support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.